Hello again, my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and welcome to another video on ACS revision in less than 10 minutes. Now, today's video is going to be continuation of ventilation and we're going to be looking at flueless appliances. But before we do that, why don't you take some time to please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want to know when I'm releasing new videos. So, let's stop waffling because this is what it's all about and let's get on with finding out what's required for ventilation for flueless appliances. Let's have a quick look at the ventilation requirements for cookers. So, first of all, we've got appliance type. So if it's a domestic oven, hot plate, grill, or any combination thereof. So it doesn't matter what you've got. Also, it doesn't matter what the maximum rated input is. You will still have to go off this section here, which is all about the room volume and the size of the permanent ventilation required. So if we have a room volume of less than five meters cubed, we'll need a hundred centimeters squared of free air plus an openable window or any other way of extraction. Now this opening window has to go direct to outside. If you've got a conservatory built onto the back of your house, then that can cause a few problems and it gets quite technical. So basically, if you are having a conservatory built on the back of your house, it's covering your kitchen window, make sure they leave the window open so it can go to outside. So this opening window has to communicate direct to outside air. Uh, if we have a room volume between 5 meters cubed and 10 meters cubed, we need 50 centimeters squared. We've got this little asterisk, we'll have a look at that in a minute, and we also need an openable window. And if our room is greater than 10 meters cubed, we don't need any permanent ventilation, but we still need the openable window. Now, if we've got a, a room volume of between 5 and 10 meters cubed, if the room has a door opening direct to outside, the no permanent vent is required, but the opening window still is, or any kind of extraction which complies to the building regs. Now, if you have a bedsit, your bedsit has to be over 20 meters cubed before you can have a cooker in it. Other than that, you can have a single ring or hot plate. So that's the ventilation requirements for these cookers. Range cookers are slightly different and you should always refer to the manufacturer's instructions for range cookers um, and follow those for your ventilation requirements. So let's have a look at the ventilation requirements for these flueless space heaters. So we've got appliance type, maximum rated input in net, room volume, vent size and whether we need an openable window or not. Same as what you would do for a cooker. Remember, it's a flueless appliance. So we've got a space heated in a room. So that's a living room, dining room. And we've got our maximum rated input in net kilowatts of 45 watts per meters cubed. I'll go through that after this. It says room volume, meters cubed, with a dash in it, because we're looking at the 45 watts per meters cubed. And then it says the vent size. We need 100 centimeters squared plus 55 centimeters squared for every kilowatt over 2.7 kilowatts net and an openable window. I'll go through all this 45 watts in a minute. So space heater in an internal space of 90 watts per meters cubed. Again, the room volume is the 90 watts per meters cubed. We'll have a look at that in a minute. And it then says 100 centimeters squared plus 27.5 centimeters squared for every kilowatt over 5.4 kilowatts net with an openable window. And then we've got a space heater conforming to BS EN 499-2002. What the hell is that? Well, it's an LPG fire. And that's one stored in a room. We've then got up to 50 watts per meters cubed, but the room volume has to be greater than 50 meters cubed. And then it's 25 centimeters squared per kilowatt with a minimum of 50 centimetres squared at high and low level with an openable window. And again, space heaters to BS EN 499-2002 is again LPG. And again, it's to an internal space. This time it's 100 watts per metres cubed with a room volume has to be greater than 50 metres cubed. And again, it's a 25 centimetres squared per kilowatt with a minimum of 50 centimetres squared at high and low level. 
and an openable window. So that's what we need to be working to for the ventilation. Let's have a look and find out exactly what we mean by 45 watts per meters cubed. So this is the example for 45 watts per meters cubed. Now it says it needs to be the net figure, but we'll take the fire we've just been working on, which was two kilowatts gross. So how do we turn gross to net for natural gas? Well, we need to divide by 1.11. So if we do two divided by 1.11, we've got 1.8 kilowatts net. Now then, the manufacturer's instructions for this fire says it cannot be installed in a room with a volume of less than 30 meters cubed. Okay, so that's basically it, because the manufacturer tells you what size the minimum room is. But if you do not have the manufacturer's instructions, what it says is this. If we take this 1.8 and times it by 22.22, that will give you your minimum room volume you can install that appliance in. Comes out at 40 meters cubed for the room volume but the manufacturer told us 30 so it's important if you are a customer to keep these manufacturers instructions because the engineer if he doesn't have the instructions could be saying your room volume is too small now if we take this 45 watts per meters cubed and times it by the room volume of 30 it comes out at 1350 watts were allowed in a 30 meters cubed and if we do 1,350 divided by 1,000, because there are 1,000 watts in a kilowatt, comes out at 1.35 kilowatts, but our fire is 1.8. But again, the manufacturer says it can go in a room greater than 30 meters cubed. And the other way of doing it, 45 times 40, okay, because well, that's basically what we've got here. 1,800 watts or 1.8 kilowatts. So if you haven't got the manufacturer's instructions, you follow uh, the times in it by 22.2. I'll do the 45 watts by the room volume, and that'll tell you what size you can have um, in the room, or what size appliance you can have in the room. Now let's finish off these videos on ventilation, and let's talk about some examples for these flueless space heaters of the 45 watts and the 90 watts per meters cubed. We'll talk about the 45 watts per meters cubed first. So we have a 3.6 kilowatt flueless fire installed in a room of 90 meters cubed. So what we would do is we would take our 45, because that's 45 watts per meters cubed, and times it by 90. And that would give us 4,050 watts that's what allows us, as you've seen from the other example, of the kilowatts we're allowed in that room. So we do 4,050 divided by 1,000 comes out at 4.05 kilowatts. And we've got a 3.6 kilowatt space heater installed in this room. Can we install it? Well, hopefully you've said yes, because we can install it, because it's, we're up to 4 kilowatts and we've got 3.6. Now then, we know we're allowed up to 2.7 kilowatts for 45 watts per meter cubed with 100 centimeters squared, but we've got 3.6. So we do 3.6 minus this 2.7, which equals 0.9. And we also know we need 55 centimeters squared of free air over the 2.7 kilowatts plus the 100. So we do 0.9 times 55 is 49.5 plus the 100 comes out at 149.5 centimeters squared of free air required for that 3.6 kilowatt flueless space heater in a room of 90 meters cubed. Now let's have a look because we're running out of time. 6.5 kilowatt flueless fire in an internal space of 80 meters cubed. So the internal space is 80 meters cubed. Now we know it's 90 watts per meters cubed for this one now because we're in an internal space, not a room. So we're in a hallway or a landing or whatever. So we do 90 times 80 because the room volume is 80 is 7,200 watts. 
7,200 divided by 1,000 is 7.2 kilowatts. So if we do this 6.5 and we minus 5.4, because for the um, 90 watts per meters cubed, we're allowed up to 5.4 kilowatts with 100 centimeters squared of free air. So we do 6.5 minus 5.4 is 1.1. So we do 1.1 times 27.5, and the reason why it's 27.5 is because we need an extra 27.5 per kilowatt over this 5.4 plus 100. So it would equal 30.25, then we add on the 100, which is, gives us a total of 130.25 centimetres squared of free air. So, very last thing is just remember all flueless appliances require an openable window, whether it's a cooker, whether it's a water heater, or whether it's a space heater. But the flueless space heater requires a primary source of heat in that room, or that internal space, so it's got to have a radiator, okay? And that um, ventilation needs to be at least a metre away from the appliance. And that's to stop the ASD, the atmospheric sensing device, or the ODS, the oxygen depletion system, staying on and vitiating the room. So, if you've liked this video, why don't you give me that thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If there's any subjects you want me to cover, then put it in the comments below. Again, if you're not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when I'm uploading these videos. All I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video, guys. Cheers.